Alright, a very good evening out there in Twitch land, everybody. It's Captain Naps here with you once again. Just gonna mute my uh, audio check there, but it looks like everything's working. Uh, hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, once again, hard to believe how long it's taken to get to this point, but welcome back to uh, another chapter of A Pilot's Life, and uh, this time we're gonna have some fun. Uh, we're gonna end the schedule with a bang. And uh, for those of you that don't know, we are going to Boston. And it is Friday night, and it is Friday Night Ops in Boston. So I'm going to get this flight going pretty quickly here, because this is going to be fun. When we get to Boston, it's going to be crazy. So this is the last turn in my schedule for this month. I can't believe it's taken me a month to get through 10 flights. Obviously, uh, doing this as a hobby, part-time, whenever I have time, this is all I have right now. So it's not like I'm doing a lot of flying. But... Uh, Nevertheless, uh, it took me a month just to get through this schedule, but I'm happy. It took me, oh, taking me over a month. It's like a month and a half just to get through this schedule, but that's okay. We're getting through the end of it. We're going to try and get at least this first leg. Last leg, I don't know. We'll see how we feel after we get to Boston. It's going to be crazy in Boston, though. It's Friday Night Ops on the VATSIM network. We're going to fly it, and it's going to be fun. So, uh, just a quick check of my uh, dashboard here, and I do have a little... Uh, uh, a little more uh, money in my bank account than I had before. I did get paid for some of the flights I did last month, which is great because it's uh, a new month. I get paid on the first day of the month, so uh, now we're going to build up some more hours for the next uh, for the next uh, paycheck. So, anyways, uh, without further ado, let's get the show on the road because I want to get there before it gets late and before uh, the crowd all vanishes because it's going to be fun. Uh, so let's get in the flight deck and let's get uh, on with it here. So I'm just going to... Uh, there we are back to my normal view here and uh, just start to get started so uh, we are going to go to Boston and it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun so uh, we did already get the uh, airplane all fired up as you can see here uh, we will make sure that the emergency lights are armed and then we can start boarding and give me one second because I'm just going to check the status of my track IR because it sometimes tends to reset when I don't want it when I don't want it to, so just one second. Nope, not that one. There we go. All right, there we go, we're back. And as I suspected, my track hire was not set up correctly, and that's why it was so jumpy. Now it's a little bit better here. It's a little bit more normal. So as you can see, the aircraft is powered up. We do have the emergency lights on, or armed anyways now, and the bridge is hooked up. So let's go ahead and ask GSX to start boarding while we get this whole uh, thing on the road here. So uh, request boarding. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get this. Uh, we're gonna get this going here. So we're gonna start off with the uh, FMS here. I'm gonna pop it up here in the corner. Of course, it never is quite in the right spot with my overlay there. So something like that will look better for you guys. And we'll hit accept on the other one too, just so it's done. All right. Uh, so we're gonna do our flight plan to Boston. I'm just going to pause my track IR here while I type this in, so you guys aren't uh, going crazy while I'm looking around at my flight plan here. So today, Toronto to. Boston. And uh, let's see, we've got, uh, yes, accept. So flight plan menu depart, first of all, we're going to do our departure from Bo from Toronto, it's TVAD Foo, and actually one thing I haven't done is I have not checked uh, the ATIS here in Toronto. So let's just uh, check that controller ATIS there. They're using the 23s and 24 right, so 23, 24s. So we're going to say 24 right, most likely for departure. So go ahead and type in 24 right, number 8. And the departure today, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see my routing on there. It's a TVAD 2 departure. Runway 24 right transition is not totally correct because there should be another transition off there. And I have to open exit 2 to get the uh, baggage loaded. That should have done it. And uh, quick glance outside. And there we go. We do have number 2 open now. Baggage loader is here. He's going to start loading baggage in a minute here. And, uh, of course, as soon as I look away, it takes that away. All right, so go back to the flight plan. And uh, if you check your Navigraph charts for uh, this flight, which I have not actually uh, loaded yet, but uh, there it is, Toronto, Boston, and Origin. There it is, charts list is what I'm looking for here, really, is to make sure I do have the uh, right number of charts. Uh, the right uh, SID here, or the right number of waypoints, I should say. So this is going to be the one, the TVAD2, yeah, so uh, it should be Maven, Natum, T, 
TVAD and APA. And as usual, the transition is missing. TVAD. TVAD, there we go. And then we do APA, and then we can go to our flight plan route down below, which is to continue. Uh, where is it here? Uh, after that, it's direct to Hank. H A N K K. Uh, yep. Oops. What? It doesn't recognize. H A N K K. H A N K K. There it is. I must have spelled that wrong somehow. Hink, and then uh, we want to do uh, airways. We want to do a list airways. Q935 all the way to Fabian intersection. And then we do just uh, direct to Albany and join the non RNAV Gardner 4 arrival. Just because we're a slower prop, we don't get to fly the uh, good old J fund arrival. So we got to do the Gardner arrival. Boston, I don't know what they're landing. Um, I'm going to put in 3 3 left because that's what the flight plan has. I don't think that's going to be accurate. But, anyways, point, the important thing is we get the, the Gardner 4 arrival via Albany in there. And uh, we'll put in ILS 3 3 left. Or like I said, right now, not too big a deal. We're going to probably have to change that as we get closer in when we figure out what they're actually doing there. But there it is, Albany, and then there's a no link, and then there's another Albany. So let's fold that Albany up there, number 14. Put it on top of that Albany. And then that puts us right into the arrival there. There you go. That looks nice. All right. And that's all, do that's all done there. And then uh, uh, that's it. Uh, we don't need to worry about the no link Boston Revere and then the approach after that. We're going to get vectors at some point. And then this no link is for the missed approach. So that's fine. We can have that no link in there. And that no link is at the end of the missed approach. Those no links are all fine in there. Lots of waypoints for such a short flight. 34 waypoints in the FMS. Wow. For a short flight, that's crazy. Uh, for what is a little more than an hour flight. All right. And sorry about that. I knew that I forgot to do something, and that was one little alarm I had to, to uh, change. Anyways, okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what was I doing? Okay, so flight plan is done. Fuel. We have got a lot of extra fuel today. So our uh, alternate fuel, we're going to go to Providence for an alternate. That requires... At 9.90. And our hold fuel, I actually made a miscalculation in SimBrief and put 30 minutes when I'm supposed to put 45. So usually it's about 1,400. I'm going to put 1,400 in there. I'm not going to put any extra in there. Our total reserves are 23.90. Uh, we are bringing a little bit less than 3,000 pounds of extra fuel, so over an hour of extra fuel. Hopefully that should be enough to get us into Boston without having to divert. Uh, we haven't actually loaded the fuel yet. So let's quickly go and check our weight and balance here. And again, from my SimBri flight plan. Uh, so I'm supposed to have 67 people this evening to go to Boston. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put 12 people back there. That's fine. Uh, the cargo loading is fine. Fuel, we want at least 8,000 pounds. That's what we're planned at with 3,000 extras, 8,100. I may even see if it can take 8,500 and just just make sure. I, I, just, I wouldn't want to have to divert. That would be silly. So we'll put even, even 9,000 pounds of takeoff fuel. The trip should burn about 3,000. So our landing mass is there. Landing weight's right there. All right. So in that data to the flight sim, and I think GSX already boarded it because it seems like... Does it say boarding is complete? Boarding passengers now. But I don't hear them unless I've just simply got it so low that you guys can't hear it. Let me just investigate my audio levels here. Because I don't hear any boarding going on. It says there's boarding going on. I hear the sounds of the vehicles driving around. But oddly enough, I don't hear the passengers, which is weird. Oh well, we won't worry too much about GSX. That is the least of our concerns here. What's important is we get this flight going. So we got the fuel uh, done. Uh, so fuel on board is uh, 9,010 pounds, which is great. That should be, that's almost a full load of gas. Normally I wouldn't bring that much, but it's Friday night ops. You can end up holding for a while sometimes, depending on how it's going. So uh, ZFW's 54764. 
hopefully we won't burn close to that much fuel. But at least we're ready. 63 and 770, we're still under max weight. And the time zone as well, we got to put it in there, minus 5, and then we get a realistic local ETA. Okay, local time, 945, perfect. Okay, uh, so we've got... Uh, the fuel, uh, the FMS is all done. The one thing I should do is also cross-fill it to the second FMS here. Da -da -da -da. And cross-fill the fuel, so cross-fill the flight plan and the fuel, and then both FMSs have all the stuff on the same pages. Boarding's complete. I guess that was it. All the passengers boarded. I started the boarding, yeah, I started boarding when you guys showed up, so I don't know why that was so quick, but anyways, not a big deal. Alright. Uh, yeah. Uh, so let's just go through a quick flow here. Everyone hold on to your hats, because here comes... Here comes track IR. Alright, so electrical panel, everything looks good. Everything is on. Ice protection, we just need to open those for now. We don't turn anything else on until we start the airplane. And we can do the tests if we want. I'm not going to worry about the tests. We'll say the plane's already flown today, so we're not going to do the tests. And exterior lights we don't need on. Alright. We've got the panel lighting on. We don't need the APU today. Uh, everything's looking normal. Everything's normal, centered, normal, auto, closed. Set that for the landing field elevation at this point. All that stuff's looking good. And finally, AC panel. We got the generators on. Research fan should be on already. Min. And we'll change that to cabin. Otherwise, we'll leave these in auto. Fuel's done. Never smoking in the flight pl in the airplanes anymore. Uh, and test the advisory lights. Make sure everything is on. I've got it set to dim now because it is nighttime. I find sometimes it's a little bit too dim almost. I may turn it back to bright. And there's the caution and warning lights test as well. There we go. And those should reset when I re re release the caution and warning lights. Little minor glitches I notice in this airplane over time. Not a big deal. Alright, uh, in the meantime, let's get our go around bars up there. And we gotta do a heading and alt cell. And uh, while I'm at it here, what have I got in the way of ATC here in Toronto? I don't got much, I just got Toronto Center. Which is surprising. For, for Friday Night Ops, I would have thought we'd have a lot of people on board, but anyways. Because it, it, Boston uh, is is so close to Toronto that you get a lot of flights from Toronto to Boston. So I'm surprised that there's only one controller online. But he's a pro. He's an old pro. So uh, I'm not too worried anyways. I know he's going to know what he's doing here. So we're going to go ahead and set 3,000 three three on there. And let me grab my numbers here. Oh, there's a new controller online. That's not the person I was expecting. Not the voice I was expecting. I know the Toronto controller as well. All right, 64,000 pounds. Takeoff numbers. All right, so uh, we're going to do a flat five takeoff, which is going to be 136. It's going to be a fast speed here, 136. But it's a long runway in Toronto. We don't need to use short takeoff numbers. 36. Ah, can't get it. There it is. 36 again. 44 and 56. Toronto 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 Make one adjustment here. Uh, one full on board looking to pick up the there we go, yeah. That's what I suspected. Okay. Figured out the cause of that. Got rid of it. Alright. There was a weird little feedback coming in there. Which I was not... Alright, so let's get up to 1600 for our flap retraction altitude here. There we go. Uh, altimeter setting in Toronto, 3020. There we go, 3020, that looks pretty realistic for Toronto. Five and change, anyways. Almost 600. And there we go. Alright, and then that's all good. That's all been set. The taxi light is switched down. One thing I'm going to remember to do today, and it's get his on. The FO's flow, which is almost identical to the captain's, but just on his side. And I'm going to move this 
I'm going to get a caution light trigger. That shouldn't happen. I don't know why that happens when you do it manually. But it's no big deal. We know it. We dealt with it. I think everything else. And let me just check all my controls. Yep, all the controls are working today, which is good. Alright, awesome. All controls are working. Let's get our... All right, let's get our departure briefing out of the way while we wait for a word to get a word in here. So, uh, actually, I'll just call for the clearance first, just to make sure we brief the correct runway. I'm going to turn this up a little bit because it's a little bit hard for me to hear, and I'm sure it's a little bit hard for you guys to hear. How about that? Toronto Center, very good evening. Encore 3600, looking for the IFR to Boston. Encore 3600, Toronto Center, good evening. You're close to the Boston Airport via the TVAD 2 departure. Oppa transition, flight plan route. Departure runway 24 right, squawk 0535. Okay, Encore 3600 is cleared to Boston via the TVAD 2 departure, Oppa transition, and flight plan route. Departure off 24 right, squawk 0535. Rebank correct information, Victor, push at our discretion, call me for taxi. Okay, we're going to call you for taxi, push at our discretion, Encore 3600, thanks. I'm going to turn that up even more, just because I want you guys to be able to hear the ATC as well as I can hear it. And it, even for me, it's fairly quiet at this point, so I want you guys to be able to hear it. Okay, uh, so the one thing I do need to do then is put in the squawk code, it's otherwise as expected. We're just going to try and get it fixed. So zero... Lindbergh 874, uh, Roger. Five, if you need any three, heading, uh, instead of uh, flight plan route for now, five. For you. Okay, uh, uh, alright, so we're departing. When, uh, uh, I'm just doing this off my tablet here, so if anybody's got we the charts, still, feel, still feel free to uh, follow along. Roger, so we're going to be on 10 9 to start with just the airport taxi route here. It's going to be straightforward to Toronto, uh, at least for someone who's familiar with the airport. We're at gate Alpha 6, which is at the east end of the Terminal 3 satellite. Uh, so we're going to be uh, taxiing out probably Alpha Tango and uh, Bravo Charlie for runway 24 right is the expectation. No hotspots along that route. Uh, just make sure we hold short of the runway when we get to it. Departure today is the TVAD 2 departure off runway 24 right. I'm just going to take that off for a second so you guys stop looking down while I'm looking down here at my plates. Um, this is on chart 10-3 November the 18th of May 2018. And uh, let's see here, we've got uh, the bold notice radars required, the rest of the notes are all very standard in Toronto, and uh, yeah, we're going to be departing off of runway, let's see here, uh, we're going to be departing off runway 24 right, so specifically we're going to be, uh, unless we have somebody DC climbing heading 237 to 1000 feet, then climbing left turn heading 235, or as assigned and expect radar vectors to Maven, or as assigned then proceed via the depicted route again, if I pull it up, the routing is... Uh, Maven, Natum, TVAD, and APA. Uh, that's all there. Unless there's anybody to maintain 3,000, we do have 3,000 in the box there as well, so that's all looking good. Uh, terrain, 3,100 foot, the highest MSA around Toronto. Weather is... Uh, weather is... Roger, turn right, direct right, camera on course. Proceed direct right, camera on course. Let's see here. Weather is uh, okay in Toronto. Operational, no no TAMs, no MELs, everything's functioning in this aircraft. I'd say we're good to go. Alright, so without further ado, let's get to the checklist so we can make sure that we are ready to go here. So I'm going to go ahead and take myself off the off of pause there. And originally before I start checks, so external power APU. Uh, external power is on, recirc fan is on, emergency lights are armed, anti-skid is uh, on, external checks are complete, gear pins. Oh, better believe those majestic gear pins are going to be stowed. Gear pins. They are not installed at this time. Uh, alt gear door and landing gear inhibit switch is... That's closed, and that's closed the norm. And uh, flight deck preparations complete. So the before, originally before start check complete. Before start check, circuit breakers. Check. It's almost easier to do a tactile check. Uh, in, in reality, you just run your hand across all to make sure nothing's sticking out. Escape hatch is closed. Battery master main aux standby is on. Uh, seat belts are 
on. Flight taxi is taxi. Yaw damper is on. Fuel quantity, we got 9,000 pounds. That should be enough to get us there, I hope. Emergency brake pressure is on and check. Power levers are disc. Condition levers are fuel off. And the takeoff briefing is complete. ACAR system initialized. Let's do it. All right, so my current flight. Let's go ahead and select the aircraft. We're going to keep using the same aircraft. We've been using it the whole time. WEJ. It's the one that I have. C-G-W-E-J, there it is. It's the one that I have uh, a livery for, so it's just I keep using the same one. That's there. I've already dispatched myself with Simbri, so all we need to do is hit Start Flight. Have a nice flight, it says. And we are on our way. All right, so end flight. Yep, so that is it. We are ready to go. All right, so everyone's boarded, so let's go ahead and remove the jet bridge. No, it doesn't want to activate this way, so we'll just go ahead and go sewed. You can undock the jetway, thank you. There it goes, and then we can probably close our doors. If I check out the doors page, I probably still have the front and the back door open, right? So let's go ahead and close those with the keyboard really quick. There goes that one, and there goes that one. All right, so we got the weight and balance. We're gonna say we're good Liberty to go. The Cleveland Center gonna call GSX. Uh, prepare for pushback and departure. We don't need the icing tonight. And I'm going to do a quick edit pushback for you guys again because I don't know where this guy's going to push me to. Uh, I'm going to say I don't want to go straight back. I want to go back to about here. There we go. But I want to be turned to face down the taxiway, which is like this. Just got to scroll the mouse wheel enough to turn it there. There we go. That would be a good pushback location, something like that. Ah, don't move again. Shoot, I didn't mean to do that. And now it won't click. Well, there it goes. Okay, good enough. All right, let's accept that. All right. Okay, so we're going to do the start approved check. No steering is off. Turn those lights on, by the way. There we go. It's easier to see. Uh, transponder is going to on alt. Uh, doors and fueling lights are... Let's see here. Doors and fueling lights are both out. APU bleed is off. Lock isolate is uh, off. And anti-collision is going to red. The start approved check is complete. Just going to turn up the uh, lighting on the FO side. Oh, the lighting's already up. Okay, good. Uh, Alright. And... Uh, Clear on two. As far as the FO can see, we're clear on two. Starting engine two. Alright, we've got rotation. Bring up the condition lever to start feather. And then we should see fuel flow. There we go. We've got ITTs rising. Uh, perfect. ITTs rising, oil pressure's rising, NH is rising. That's engine adapter heat 2. If I ever get to the ice protection unit, you guys will learn all about what that means and why that comes up. Alright, I'm just going to do this. Bring that back to the electrical page. Alright, and it looks like we've got a good start on number 2 there. So we're going to go ahead and call to have the Toronto Biscayne 124 ready to GPU touch. removed. And actually, I should have done this first. I should have flicked it off, my bad. And I told him to take it off. And it looks like the generator's holding the load. I'm just going to do a real quick external check here, guys, because I am just par paranoid about the bloody gear pins. One of these views here will show me... Right there. I don't see any red flag hanging down. The gear pins are not hanging down. All right, you guys ready to go? All right, so we got a good start on two. The GPUs are removed. The bra brakes are coming off. You guys are clear for the push. Too late, guys. We already started one engine. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and say clear on one. Starting engine one.
And normally I would watch this, but I like to just give you guys something to look at, so I'm going to go to the external view here. And here's the pushback off gate Alpha 6 here in Toronto. One off the bright tug. Looks like a normal start of that engine. Sounds like a normal start. I don't see any flames coming out, so it's probably going to start normally. Should be watching it, but just like to have the external view just for something different sometimes to look at, right? Especially when we're flying at night all the time. There we are, push back from gate Alpha 6, right near the Arcana base, the end of Terminal 3. Oh, for some reason the volume came up on my phone right there. Alright, and uh, so set parking brake you want. Oh, uh, you better believe we got good engine start guys, you can go ahead. The only thing missing from GSX would be some good voice activation. Obviously, FS2 crew can add that as well, but wouldn't that be nice? Alright. Hopefully my frame rate doesn't die completely when we get to Boston. I turned down a whole bunch of detail settings in the hopes that it will not die completely when we get there. Unlocking gear. Because this is going to be fun to be uh, in that, that busy of an airspace. Alright, where did buddy go? Oh, there he goes. Alright, turn around buddy. Give me a little hand wave so I know that we're good to unfeather the props. That's all I'm waiting for, come on. Unfeathering the props. Ten minutes. We're wondering if we can head to rock though and uh, start a hold. You're gonna one twenty heavy confirm like you'd like a hold at the rock. Alright, so there they go. Alright, props are unfeathered and we're just gonna somewhere right about there, just for just about halfway between flight idle and disc. Notice how quiet it is compared to being right at disc. Okay, uh, after start checklist. And I am going to just put this, all the size protection on just to prevent uh, me from getting fogged up here. Uh, and I'm trying to remember the FOs and the captain's flows at the same time. Come on, guys. Let's get the switches on here. There we go. Flat five. Flax off. Auto feather pumps. More pumps. Extra pumps. Alright, and flight control check. So, first of all, we just do the rudder. And then the captain can turn on the nose steering, and then while the FO does the rest of the check. So, then he checks the elevators. And the ailerons. And then he turns off the, oop, not that one, turns off the number three hide ISO valve, closes that up, and that elevator press light should go away in a moment, and call for the after start checklist. After start checklist, start select light is out, external power APU is off, bleed air is min and on, ice protection is uh, standard uh, plus the windshield. Caution warning lights, check to spark and break. Battery temps and loads. Batteries are charged and temperatures are good. Uh, tank ox ones 1 and 2 are. There we go. On, auto feathers, AS select, engine rating is normal, takeoff power 90%. Uh, standby high press V2 controller on. High 3 elevators are checked. Flight controls were checked and free in the de ice pressure down here. Checks. Flap, we've got 5 set and indicating condition levers are max. No steering is on. Radar and navcom are all set up. 
and PFD, MFD, ED is uh, all set with no flags uh, after uh, start checklist is complete. Toronto Center is not going to, yep. And Toronto Center Encore 3600 is ready for taxi from gate Alpha 6. Harbor 3600, runway 24 right, Alpha Better 3020. Taxi via Alpha Tango, Bravo, and Charlie. Hold short of runway 24 right. All right, 24 right via Alpha Tango, a Bravo, Charlie will hold short, Encore 3600. Thank you. All right, I'm just going to recenter my. There we go. That's a little better. All right. Parking brakes coming off, and the taxi lights going on. And remember that I actually get a tiller on this one, so I can actually use my tiller to steer. Nice. There we go. And we're away. On our way. On the last turn of my first month at a pilot's life. This is a kind of an interesting. It's it's an interesting goal to try and meet these schedules. I mean, if you really want to challenge yourselves, you'd have to fly them at the same time or, uh, you know, perhaps alter your sim time to match the time that the flight is supposed to depart at, see if you can depart on time. That would be an interesting challenge. I'm just happy to really just be, uh, you know, getting these flights done. It, it's given me a mission anyways, and that's that alone is useful. So out here on Alpha Tango, at least it's not snowing. No need for, for de-ice, which is nice. The other thing, too, is that it's not killing my frame rate. De-icing can really just play havoc. Or not de-icing, but, um, ah, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like precipitation in the sim just plays havoc on my frame rates. So it's nice to have... Nice to have a, uh, a precipitation-free night. Uh, Toronto is hard enough on the frame rate as it is. I don't need it to getting any worse by having having precipitation or something else in the sim to slow it down. All right, let's get going here. All right, now that we're here, I see another plane parked way down there in the distance. If you look about our 11, 11:30, you can see just a green and red light there parked over by Terminal One, and somebody was just cleared for takeoff as well. So we're going to see them roll in a minute past us. But in the meantime, let's do the taxi check. So taxi light is obviously on. Uh, the altimeters, wow, talk about frame rates, all of a sudden it's just dying. What's going on here? What was that? Honestly, computer. I, I worry what's going to happen when we get to Boston. Alright, altimeters 302012 and 3 set. Uh, take off, warn. One, two, three, no response. There goes the departing airplane. And wow. Frame rate's dying already, and we didn't even go anywhere yet. Alright, there goes departing traffic. Wow, I was doing okay. The frame rate was, was double what it was. was double just like before I started taxiing. And then I get taxiing here, the airplane starts moving, and... I'm a, I'm a little afraid of what's going to happen in Boston. I hope we get a good enough frame rate that we can get to the gate. I really would. I really do need a new computer. I think in the next year or two. I'm especially going to keep up with the streaming and everything else. Try and keep it on the center line. It's a little bit hard when there's a big lag because of the frame rate, but. Alright, so this should be Victor coming up. 
I can't remember if he said Delta or Charlie. I can't remember now, to be honest. I didn't write it down. Toronto Encore 3600. Did you say Taxi Charlie or Delta for 248? Encore 3600, uh, Charlie for 248. Okay, Taxi Charlie, thank you. Probably because it was what I was expecting to hear, so I didn't think much of it, so I didn't really commit it carefully to memory. Alright, so Charlie is the next left turn up here. Thank you. <laughs> somebody's watching and somebody's listening better than I am. You're hired as my new first officer. Please write down all the clearances as we go here. <laughs> this gate 124, turn left, direct the saver on course and climb side of 370. Direct saver on course, that's about 370, this gate 124. I heard the Canadian Express taxiing as well, so I don't know where he is. There he is. Okay, so he's going to probably pass well behind us now because it looks like he's facing nose to the west, so he's definitely going to be behind us. All right. That's okay, we can deal with that then. Okay, don't overdo it, just a little slight steering. All we need. There we go, alright. Trying to keep it on the center line. She's very sensitive with the tiller. There's a huge dead spot and then it suddenly, suddenly steers, so I should really be trying to maybe use the rudder. Might be a pro the pedals would probably be a smarter way to steer, just to just to adjust for the center line. You know what? Actually, that's that's much better. That's working much better for me. All right, that's much nicer. Yeah, that's much better at maintaining the center line. Also helps when I'm focusing and I'm not sightseeing as we go. Ooh, ah, pretty scenery. <laughs> some major changes that are happening down in the east end of the Toronto airport here that need to start being dealt with in sceneries, I think. Alright, I don't see anybody on final by the looks of it, so... Just gonna make the turn in the bay, and then if he's not saying anything by the time we turn to the bay here, we'll just tell him we're holding short. And Toronto uh, Encore 3600 holding short 24 right ready. Okay, call your airborne and a heading 180 in the air clear for takeoff runway 24 right on Gore 3600. Thank you. All right, lineup check. Cabin crews, please uh, please be seated for takeoff. All right, uh, lineup crew. Up notification is PA. Transponder is on alt. Uh, what the? That switch is still stuck where it was. It got stuck there. Alright, TCAS is uh, TA only. MFDs are terrain and weather. Lead air is uh, min and on. And flight taxi is. Flight. Line up check is complete. Lights on. And pop this out before I forget so I can actually see what I'm doing. And. I did not set the heading bug, was the one thing I did not set. There we go, this time I was going to set it before we actually start rolling. Just get this thing turned a little bit first before we crank the power. Alright, and there we are. Uh, take off, check power. Power set, there's 80 knots. This thing wants to rotate on its own before we even get to V1. V1 
one and rotate. Cause of rate, gear up. Alright, there's 400 feet. Let's do heading 180. Pretty close. And there's 1600. Let's go uh, flaps zero, bleeds on, and climb power set. And we'll go ahead and autopilot on there, because it's just too much work for me to do all of it at once. And throttle departure uh, on core 3600, uh, 2000, climbing 3000, heading 180. Number 3600, uh, you are identified, turn left, direct uh, nave on on course, climb flight level 210. A left turn direct Maven on course and climb flight level 210 on core 3600. Thank you. Alright, so let's get. Over 3600, uh, uh, correction, climb 5000. Okay, climb 5000 only and uh, Maven on course on core 3600. Alright, there's You're the 5000. Uh, let's pitch a little higher so we don't over speed so and let's go ahead with a direct to uh, Maven is number 4. Enter. Down 8, 000, 7, 0, 1. LNAV, Maven, here we go. Uh, center, can you express five, six, In the turn. Express 563, runway heading on departure, call me when airborne, wind 90111, cleared for takeoff, runway 24 right. Uh, center, can you express 563, uh, 24 right, cleared for takeoff, runway heading, call with 4,000, climbing 5,000, we've got alt cell. I just want to see if I can climb flight level 210. Climb flight level 210 on core 3600. Alright, so disregard the uh, the uh, alt star there. There we go, 210 set, alt cell. Keep that pitch going for now. How's that trapezoid? Definitely need quite a bit more right rudder. Give it a little burst and see how that works for me. It's better. Definitely better. Let's just sink that heading bug and then let's get that after takeoff. Checklist done. Right. So we'll shut off all the pumps and then call and then after takeoff checklist states. Uh where is it? There it is. Landing gear up. Flap zero. Climb power. Set MZL. Uh, bleed air one and two is norm and on. Auto feather is off. Tank oxalis one and two are off. High pumps are norm. Engine temps and pressures are all green. FA notification. Sorry. Uh, ice protection is uh, standard plus props and windshield. Or er, standard plus uh, windshield is put the props on as well because we're going through cloud deck. Standard plus props and windshield. Cabin press temp controls. Check, pressure starting to build, cabin starting to climb, differentials up there, and if a notification chime after takeoff check with the Alright. There we go. We're through the clouds there. There's the uh, downtown area right there. And away we go. Alright. Yeah, we probably should chime the FAs. Yeah. There we go. We're on our way to Boston. See if we can center that trapezoid. There it is, and we're already through 10,000. Oh, that goes pretty quick. There we go. 10,000. Lights off. Yeah, they're all off. Pressurization checks should be four, th uh, four inches, four psi, 200 or 2,000 feet, and 400 feet per minute. 424. That looks good. Seat belts are going off, and we are on our way to Boston. 
really should not take us too long to get there, depending on how long we actually end up having to hold uh, for. Express, uh, through 3, for 5, but based on our... Uh, let's see here, based on our present rate of progress, ETA 2351 local. One hour and twenty minutes. I think this is going to be one of those cases where we're not going to do the return leg, guys. I just, I, I look into that time right there already. I don't see the return leg happening. Much as I would love to, because Friday Night Ops be awesome to do it. I'm just not going to, not going to do it. Last time we left Montreal at like 10:30, and I was still exhausted. My brain was uh, turning to mush by the time I got back to Toronto. We're not doing the return leg tonight, I don't think. So we'll just have to enjoy this leg out to Boston as much as possible. Pitch that down just a little bit more. Let's keep the speed going as we climb here. There we go. Well, it seems like a pretty nice evening. It's not too busy out here, anyways. So far. Toronto is not a busy sector, but I have a feeling that uh, it's going to be a different story when we get into Boston's airspace. Now, he gave us 21. Originally, I had filed 21, but then I changed it to 25, but I'm thinking that it didn't take, so I'm just going to ask him here really quick. At Toronto Encore, 3,600 for a question. Over 3,600, go ahead. Hey, uh, we tried to refile for flight level 250 as a final. Do you still show that, or do you still show 210 as a final? Over 3,600, I still uh, show 210 when it modified to 25. Uh, affirmative, if we could please show 250 for the final Encore 3600. Encore 3600, uh, Roger, that has been modified. Climb flight level 250. Climb flight level 250, thank you. Encore 3600. Air Canada 120, heavy turn left heading. Alright. There we go. Uh, 2250, it gets us there a little bit faster. Let's continue pitching down just a little little bit, keep the speed, target, speed around, 200 knots if we can, of course we're just going to be holding when we get there anyway, so I don't know what I'm really necessarily in a rush to do, but, yeah, I don't see us doing the return leg, the return leg from Boston. You're leaving my airspace to the south. Cleveland Center is not online. Radar service is terminated. And energy frequency change is approved. We'll see you all. All right. Thank you very much for the service, George. Uh, 228 for Unicom. We'll talk to you next time. Uh, Encore 3600 out. Okay, okay, so we'll switch to Unicom for a little bit here, but uh, we're going to have to go to Boston Center before too long. Uh, it's going to probably be busy when we get there. Cleveland was online till just a little while ago, but I guess they gave up. Alright, there's transition. So, set standard. Standard is set and cross-check passing. 17, 9. Pretty close anyways. Within a reasonable margin of error probably kill the prop heat at this point, because it looks like uh, we're above the whole cloud deck now. And away we go. Alright, I'm going to switch to the external view for a couple minutes here. Uh, if I can find my chase plane. Where is it? There it is. There we go. A few nice shots of the airplane in the climb here, and I'm going to also do a couple of checks here to see what we got in terms of ATC. So we lost uh, Cleveland, but we do still have Boston. Boston is still going absolutely nuts. It probably doesn't look terrible for the arrivals right now. Not terrible, uh, especially from this direction. So maybe we'll, we won't have too many delays going in, but there are still quite a lot of arrivals.
The real question is trying to figure out which Boston Center to call. I'm going to go with 2375 to start. I could be wrong. I'll wait. I'll definitely wait till we get a little closer, and I don't want to have to <laughs> make Boston work too hard to uh, scan uh, scan up the map. But all right, let's just have a quick look inside. As much as I like that view, because that's a nice view. All right, how are we doing here? 186. We lost a little bit of speed there. Pitch down a little bit more. Lugging around way too much fuel. <laughs> it's penalizing my performance here. I think. But again, I can't, you can't not bring that fuel. Not to a Friday night ops. I've almost had to divert on a couple of Friday night ops in the past, and I don't want to do it again. It seems really quiet right now. I'm surprised Cleveland went offline so early. It's it's not that late yet. It's, it's uh, uh, what is it? 3.25 Zulu? Yeah, yeah, it's getting there, but it's not that late. And we're also slowly getting up to cruise altitude. 4,000 feet to go. <laughs> the Mighty Dash, she's a good hauler, but she ain't no jet, that's for sure. In the, in the low 20s and already climbing at 1,000 feet per minute. And losing out more every time. Well, I don't know what else to talk about right now as we uh, kind of reach our top of climb here, but uh, if anybody's watching this and they haven't done the Flight Sim survey yet, uh, make sure you do go and do it. Uh, really useful tool to uh, analyze the the demographics of this <laughs> of this hobby, overwhelmingly male, among other things. But uh, I don't think the uh, nerd factor was was rated very highly. But uh, it, nevertheless, good to good to see where where people sit in this hobby, what they enjoy, what uh, what makes what makes life tick for them. You know what they're looking for. Um, for example, like I've, I'll be curious to see how many people are interested in MS twenty twenty on a very serious level like I I have mixed emotions about it I really do want it to be good but as someone who's been burned by software in the past uh, especially Microsoft having their hands in it um, you know I worry is it gonna be is it gonna be good is it gonna live up to the to the flight simulator standard uh, so I, I certainly hope it does uh, it's a very ambitious project not the level of Star Citizen, but definitely, definitely an ambitious project to take on uh, worldwide, you know, photorealistic data. That is, that's a lot. That's a lot of information to take on. There's a, there's a reason why it's never been done in the past, you know, and, and even these, all these add-ons. Like, you look at how big these add-ons get, like, uh, uh, you know, Orbex, like some of their regions now, you're talking like, you're measuring the you're measuring the size of their downloaded fractions of a terabyte. Like you're talking like, you know, fifty to a hundred gigabytes, maybe more of data. And and they're only covering very very well, but they're only covering small areas. So it's amazing how quickly that uh, that space builds up. So you talk about like realistically covering like scenery and objects worldwide. Just just the amount of information is is just absolutely phenomenal. So it, it's going. That should be two four zero climbing two five zero. So it, you know, it's it, again, it, it's awesome that they're trying to do this, and I, I wish them good luck. I think that that we that there are going to be issues with it. First of all, how capable does your system have to be to handle that much information? I mean, even just drawing just these basic land classes sometimes can be can be taxing if there's enough objects, autogen objects on there, let alone specifically picked out objects. Um, the second thing is is 
where is this information going to be stored? I can't imagine it's all going to be stored on your computer, so it's going to be stored on central servers. You're going to be streaming it as you fly, one tile at a time, which is the most sensible way to do it, but then it, there's, there's issues with that. One is that now you're relying on a central server to provide you the information. If you lose your internet, guess what? You can't go flying. Um, if your internet's slow today, guess what? You can't go flying. You can get enough information out of it. What happens if Microsoft servers decide to go down? What happens, you know, what, what's, what's the lifespan of this product? And what happens when that lifespan eventually ends and they take their servers offline? You know, you now have, you know, a uh, you, uh, probably great airplanes in your sim flying over a plain green and blue landscape with very little detail because the, the, the remote servers are offline. And as long as you can still fly it with even without that remote information, it's great. But maybe being able to cache certain amounts of it. But then again, how much space do you have on your hard drive to give up to this kind of information? Uh, the amount of information all being stored in, in uh, things like Bing Maps uh, you know, and Google Maps and, and all those mapping things, like worldwide mapping, like mapping satellite imagery, objects being drawn, the amount of information there is, is absolutely humongous. And, uh, you know, we don't think about it because we, we look at small, tiny portions of it in most cases. You know, when you look at Google Maps or, or, or Bing Maps or anything like that, you look at a small little section of it and you say, wow, that's really detailed right there. Um, then you download a small portion of it, but imagine you now trying to fly over a large portion of the Earth, you know, even... Uh, even at the speed that you're flying at, it's going to be a lot of information flying back and forth across your computer. So, uh, people with perhaps mm, capped capped data are going to have trouble with this this kind of setup. If you have a limited amount of data, you can use every month. I think it's becoming less and less common, and more and more people are getting into unlimited bandwidth packages, uh, unli unlimited uh, upload download packages. But again, that's something that's an issue. So, uh, I don't want to be a negative Nelly about it. I think Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 has lots of great potential. It looks like it's going to be a really slick looking system. I hope it runs well on on reasonable mid-range, even uh, mid-range systems people might have set up these days, because this is not a great system I'm on right now. You see what this does when I get to, f when I get to a Fly Tampa scenery. Oh, Boston already wants me to call him. 2797. Nope, oh, I had the wrong Boston in mind. Wait, can I get busy already? Boston Center, very good evening. Encore 3600 with you, level 250. Encore 3600, Boston Center, good evening. Sweet. Alright. And that saves me trying to figure out when to call him. Still waiting for the airplane to finish accelerating here. So yeah, so, you know, I think the... I think... The, I, I, I'm excited about Microsoft 2020, but... I, I, my enthusiasm is a little bit tempered by realism of how well is it going to work with lower end systems, with people who have perhaps weaker bandwidth connections, um, all those sorts of issues. You know, it's it's a very ambitious project what they're trying to do, and I wish them more 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 power to them to try and get it done. I hope that it works out. I'm reserving my overall final judgment, for, of course, for when the product actually comes out and we see how well it works out here in the real world with real simmers. So, I mean, there's lots of potential. We are overdue for a new sim. That's for sure. Well, yeah, but... Uh, <sighs> we are, and yet we're not. Like, like prepared version 4, again, it's still building on the Microsoft engine, but it's it came out not too long ago. It, one thing to keep in mind is that this new software is not brand new. It's Microsoft Flight Simulator rewritten, recoded. But the original code is still there. The problems that exist in the original... The problems that exist in the original code are still there. Nothing, the code has not been el eliminated and started from scratch. They talked about it, they thought about it, and they said for the amount of time, like it would have added another at least one to two years to the development process to start from scratch. Alright, I think that's about as fast as we're going to get out of this puppy, so we'll go ahead and do the cruise check here. Alright, so there we go. We got MCR set and pull up the cruise check here. So, cruise check states uh, altimeters. We've got, let's see here, 2992123 three set and power MCR set. Fuel. Let's check our progress now. Now we're 52 minutes from landing in Boston based on our present trajectory. We're going to get there with 5,600 pounds of fuel on board. Lots of fuel. Seatbelts are off. 
lights are all as required. Cabin press uh, checks. Let's see here at 3600 or at uh, 250, we should be at about 8,000 in the cabin. We are checked. Ice detection is uh, standard plus the windshield for defog and 24 hour ice test is uh, we'll say was completed on a previous flight. Cruise check complete. We'll get to Boston Aves in a little bit. Just want to finish ranting about Microsoft Sim 2020. I think I, I basically said what I wanted to say. I, I'm excited. I am excited. Uh, the nice thing about the fact that it's built on the old code base is I'm hoping that a lot of the existing scenery will be compatible. Okay. That's something that I, 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 to me, is fairly important. I, I've, I've invested a fair bit of money in the scenery here for P3D. Um, I want to know that, that scenery going forward, I'm going to be able to use it. Uh, in the new sim, if I if I decide to spend the money in the new sim, I you know, and I'm I haven't made up my mind. I I haven't said I will buy it. I won't buy it. Uh, I'm definitely reserving judgment to see what the final product looks like. There's a lot of potential there. There really truly is. But uh, you know, there's a lot of chance to. I hate to say screw it up, but there's a lot of chance to. Disappoint, I guess. <sighs> there's things that could go wrong with it. You know, there's, a, like I said, like, uh, whether it be uh, inability to keep the servers up with a good load, like, what happens on Cross Upon Day? Are they going to have scalable servers that can provide enough scenery information when thousands and thousands of pilots are simultaneously crossing the pond and, and, and loading up the scenery? Like, how, how well will this work? And how, and, uh, you know, if there's a central server model, how is it going to be funded? Like, is it all going to be funded from, from the front end of you buying the, serv the, the, the simulator once? This is the trouble with certainly with the server client model is someone's got to maintain those servers and it costs money to maintain servers. Bandwidth is not free, computers are not free, hard drive space is not free. It may be cheap, but when you multiply it by thousands and thousands of simmers, it could be a lot of information flying back and forth that someone has to pay for. Calling center, or sorry, six one actually, because you're back on. Yeah, Lee Max is back on. Anyways. I hope it works out, and I hope it reinvigorates this hobby even a little more and brings more people to the hobby. Uh, even if, uh, even if it does that, if it gets more people into onto the VATSIM network and into this hobby, then it, then it's a useful, a useful sim. Whether it's going to eventually land on my computer, who knows? Certainly has triggered a lot of interest, a lot of sales. PMDG definitely seems to believe in this new platform already, which gives them a lot of legitimacy. I think if if PMDG is already bought into bought into the new platform as it has said, yeah, we're going to only support the new platform going forward. That gives it a lot of legit legitimacy because that's not a decision that PMDG could take lightly. Uh, they have a very large existing market on uh, on the existing sim platforms. And I'm not saying they're abandoning them, but to abandon those existing platforms and only develop on a new platform from this point forward without even having seen the platform come out, without even knowing what the install base will likely be. Uh, they must they must have a lot of faith that uh, there are a lot of people are, are going to buy into it. And they must think that the sim has the technical capabilities to do the things that they want. Uh, to be able to support the the, the, the sim, six, six, Max, uh, the operations they want, and also that it's going to have the mass appeal. They must they must believe that it's going to have the mass appeal that people are going to buy enough copies of it, and then enough of those people are going to go and buy a PMDG aircraft as well, buy the 737 for the fourth time or the fifth time maybe. Tell you by the time some of us uh, grow old and die, we'll have spent enough money on simulated 37s to buy a real one. Delta Use a little bit of trim there. There we go. Alright, I can see Albany coming up there, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a glance down here, see if I can find the aid as well. There's a lot of aids up here. Ironically, Boston is not one that I can get yet. I'm 
think I'm in range of Boston's ATIS yet. Boston must have an ATIS, it does. I just think I'm not in range. We've got uh, Montreal, Toronto, uh, Islip, Mac Islip MacArthur, JFK, LaGuardia, and Philly. As of yet, we don't have <laughs> Boston in range. So we'll just have to continue. Uh, hope for the best. Well, this frequency isn't too busy, but it's getting there. me on the other channel here too. What time are we supposed to land in Boston? He wants to know. Fortunately, it is a Saturday tomorrow. I don't have to go to bed super early. But it's going to be a long flight back. Soon, we'll get range Boston's latest here. Ah, uh, wait. Yes, I think we're getting into range of all the Boston stuff now. Do I see the ATIS listed? Yes, I do. There it is. Okay, we can request the ATIS by eight cars. There it is. We got the Boston Logan information. Mike. Six miles of mist, broken 700. It's not the best day there. Yeah, it'll be good enough to get in anyways. Alright, so the altimeter is 3000. We'll set it in the back up here just so we got it ready to go. Let's see what approach they're doing. Uh, arriving 27, departing 33 left. That's okay, we can do that, no problem. Okay. Alright, let's see here. So, uh, let's change this in the FMS then right here while I got it in front of me here. Uh, so we're going to, uh, menu, arrive. So it's now going to be runway 27. Where is it? There it is. 27. Delta Still the Gardner 4 arrival. Albany transition, which we're not even on yet. But we're going to be doing the ILS runway 27. I acclaim. Flight plan. I'm sorry, sir. Say again. All right. After Fabin. Let's just do it this way. Albany. United 2645. Uh, Nope. There we go. And we're on our way to Albany again. There we go. So we could. Gardner, Brown, Lobby, Revere, Claim. There we go. Alright, so let's go ahead and start setting up because it's going to be before we know it, we're going to be doing this. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so let's let's get some numbers going on here. 
Uh, so performance, we're looking at landing at Boston at 60,800. 61,000 pound landing numbers, I guess. Will be the ones we're looking for. So 61,000 pounds. Delta 2526, squawk 4743. 4743 for Delta. Uh, so let's see here. So, assuming we're doing flop 15 landing, we're going to need VREF of 125. 4465, finish. And. Go around a scratch and bundle 240, okay? 115. Uh, and then, uh, V Fry and V Climb are 129, 152. So we're gonna go 30 and 52. All right, so those speeds are in, and uh, let's make sure we got the uh, ILS and everything else we need in there. All right, what else? All right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I, you know, I bend down to look at the look at the approach plates, and, and obviously things move. So. Okay. So Gardner, and then the ILS two seven, and then the taxi in. Okay. Well, we're about halfway there now. Definitely time to start briefing this arrival. Let me just pull up the approach. Alright, let's see here. So we need 111.3. 111.3 for the ILS. And the amount of course 272. Okay, so let's get this. 111.3. Yeah, somebody, I see somebody else up there. I don't know if you can see that. He's just... Hold on, he's just hiding behind my overlay there. One second. If I look up just a little bit, you should see his contrail there. Somebody else on their way to Boston there in front of us. Probably getting there faster than we are in the mighty dash, but we're getting there. All right, uh, so let's do this. Let's do uh, 111.3. One eleven three, and then two seventy two is the inbound course. So for the FO, that's pretty easy. We just do. Oops, starting to get just a little bit fast. So let's just cut the power just a little bit to bring it out of the red line there. Delta three counting on frequency. Okay, so that's 272, uh, and pull it up on here, 272, we're looking for this inbound course as well. This gain 124, contact Boston Center, 123.75. Here we go. This gain 124, Am I hitting 106? All right, and uh, I think that's about it. Oh, we need a DA as well. ILS DA in this case, 460. So let's go ahead and set that over here. And then I think we're set. All right, I think we got everything set up for arrival into Boston. Hopefully we don't have to do any holds. I'm not sure. I even remember how to do... Aha! <laughs> I do remember how to do holding. <laughs> it's been a while since I've had to do hold in this, in this bird, so... I almost thought I forgot there, but nope, we're good. I remember how to do it now. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, we're going to get this approach briefing out, out of the way now, because... That was probably Canary Express 563, because I think he took it off after us, but because he's flying a jet, he got there faster than we did. Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll get this approach briefing out of the way right now. So, uh... Let's see here. 
All right, so the Gardener 4 arrival here. I'm going to pull up this, and I'm going to put this on pause, because I'm going to be looking around anyways as I look down at my plate here, so I don't want to get make you guys seasick. All right. For some reason, it's being a real pain here. I don't know why. Okay. It won't let me zoom in or zoom out anymore. There we go. Okay, uh, so we're doing the Gardener 4 arrival into Boston. Uh, the only bold note is that radar is required. The routing is pretty straightforward after Gardener, which is GDM. So we do... Sorry, uh, we start at Albany. My apologies. We start at Albany. We do go to Wicked. We go to Gadna. Then we go to Bronx, Lobby, and all the way to Revere, and turn towards the Boston VOR in reality, usually shortly after Lobby we get uh, some kind of a uh, vector and non-turbojets landing, all other runways expect to cross Lobby at 9,000, so let's do 9,000, where are you going JetBlue? I should have did that earlier, but uh, I was waiting for your instruction. Okay, I don't have a Peggy in your flight plan anywhere. Can you go direct Cambridge, Charlie Alpha Mike, and then continue on the Q822 airway as per your flight plan? Uh, I've already passed uh, Cambridge, so the next one would be uh, Puppy or Gons. Okay, Jimmy 617, go direct Puppy. Direct Puppy. Alright, Lobby 9000 is in there. Just for curiosity's sake, let's just check out what the VNAV has to say. Lobby. Uh, lobby at 9,000. Within 1,800, uh, 10 minutes we start down. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Uh, so that's the uh, arrival there. Uh, that's not too bad. The approach, I should have left this up here, uh, is the uh, ILS runway 27 into Boston. Play 11 4 in effect on the 12th of October of 2017. The LOC 111 3 IDGU. We've tuned to both sides. And the final approach course is going to be 272, also set both sides. Wide slope at Ripit is 1700. Somewhere down here. There it is, 25. Ripit. And uh, ILSDA of 460. We did set 460. Uh, the touchdown zone at 17 feet. And that uh, should be already set over here. Pretty much to zero feet on the landing altitude as well. Yeah, so that works for me. Um, the MSA is highest southwest of the Boston Airport over downtown Boston at 2,500 feet. And the missed approach is declined to 3,000 feet straight ahead on the Boston VOR radial 268 till we get to the Bosox intersection. So basically straight ahead to get to Bosox. And uh, hold at 3,000 feet. VGSI and ILS glide path not coincidence, the only note, radar required. Three degree glide path, rills, poppy on the left, and uh, 460 foot uh, ILS DA, one and a half miles for visibility required. It's, uh, what was it, three miles I think in mist? Six miles in mist? Three miles in mist, I think. Six miles in mist, okay, so yeah, lots of, lots of room there. Uh, and that's about it. Then when we land, it's going to be fairly straightforward taxi. And I don't have a gate assigned yet, but I did look it up. Let me just pull up that particular. Okay, Express 563 to set and maintain, two four zero. Let's see if I can pull up that particular. Um, set and maintain two four zero. Okay, Express 563. Okay, Canada 7676, clear direct Monster. Uh, flight, let's see here. Gate Alpha 1 is our destination gate in Boston. Ah, uh, so... Pretty easy, straightforward taxi in, uh, right turn on either Echo or Kilo in Boston. And then uh, continue across both 22s to get to uh, Echo for Gate Alpha 1. And uh, let me just make sure I do know where gate alpha 1 is. I think I do. I think it's the last gate. Uh, and the alpha terminal, it is. So yeah, so we'll go in the alpha ramp, and it's all the way down the last gate on the right. We'll make sure to activate GSX before we get there. <sighs> Terrain 2500 was the highest MSA around Boston, and uh, weather is uh, 
It's overcast 700 feet with 6 miles uh, visibility. It's more than good enough to get in based on the present weather. That's all I've really got. Whew, that's a mouthful though. That's a lot of... Uh, it's a lot of information to throw out there. Alright, we can probably bump that power back up a little bit. It was we want it just not quite at MCR. Well, it's kind of, it's either in the detent or it's not, so... It accelerated so slowly, I think we could probably leave it there. We'll probably reach our top of descent three, four, before seven, five, we five, accelerate back to the red line again. Delta 310, climb and maintain, flight level actually disregard. It's not too busy on this frequency. Descent, flight level 240, Encore 3600. Not so much for top of drop in like five minutes. Okay. Alright, so let's get 240 in there. Encore 3600, Kennec Boston Center, 123.75. So 240 set, Alt cell. We'll do a simple VS. Minus a thousand. And this time we will have to bring the power back to prevent the overspeed. Boston Center, 123.75. Boston Center, 123.75. Boston Center, 12375. Encore 3600. Good night. Good night. It's 14 to the south east of Portland. Looking to do a pop up IFR to Bangor, Massachusetts. That we are slant pop up. Uh, it's a little too busy for that. You can expect about a one hour delay. Boston Center, good evening. Encore 3600, 244, descending 240. On Boston, say again. Encore 3600, 243, descending 240. Encore 3600, Boston Center, good evening. Uh, just head me the J Fund 2 arrival, runway 27, the Boston altimeter 3003. And Encore 3600, we're on the Gardner arrival. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Encore 3600, Roger, descend across the Bronx into section at 900,000, the Keene altimeter 3004. Okay, to send across Bronk at 900,000 on 3004, on Core 3600, thank you. Alright, so there's Alt Star 3004 set, Bronk at 900,000. Okay, there's Alt, so we can modify our flight plan here. So Bronk at 900,000. And this one we can get rid of. So let's do this one to Bronk. And four minutes to top of drop. We can go ahead, because we're level, we can go ahead and set the 900,000. We don't forget to descend. 900,000 feet set alt cell, and there is our descent point. Okay, I, I had uh, two aircraft uh, standing by. Say, uh, first one of you, say you're There you go, terrain. There we go, that's better. Mooney 8 Hotel Sierras with you at 4,000 level. Alright, we're getting there, a little bit at a time. We probably had to bring the power back up when we leveled off there. Leveled off, and I was focusing more on the continued descent and wasn't bringing up the power. Get that power back up there. Hotel Sierra, Boston Center, right, thanks. A lot to do when you're flying this aircraft single pilot. It is physically possible to fly this aircraft single pilot. Sierra, Charlie, you with it? But very challenging. Very high workload for single pilot. Seven, one, Sierra, Charlie, Boston. Certain points, anyways. Yes, two seven zero one Sierra, Charlie, Boston. Yes, sir. Your last uh, cleared to six thousand. Uh, Traffic alert. Miles. Traffic at your twelve o'clock. Four miles. Same direction at four thousand. Climb immediately. Maintain. Ah, uh, the fun of Friday Night Ops. <laughs> there we go, we got the speed coming back a little bit now. Boston Center, what runway can American 1281 expect to Kennedy? I have no idea, sir. Okay. You might want to get the ATIS. Okay. Ah, uh, the joy, the stress, the annoyance when people are not uh, making particularly small, smart radio calls. Friday Night Ops is not the time to be making unusual radio calls. If you're not familiar with ATC, this is not a time to be online. 
and definitely not a time to be doing things that are perhaps unprofessional. And it's busy enough even when everybody's doing their job properly. When people are not doing their job properly, it just it's too much. All right, I see the VNAV path is alive there, so we're going to go ahead and arm our VNAV. We're on 27 left according to the aid is, is that correct, or 27? 27, sir. Southwest 4465, when able to proceed, direct wiper across wiper at 111,000 feet, Providence altimeter, 2-9-er, 9-er, 9-er. I'm rolling in a very under Wiper, 110, for Southwest 4465. Okay, I'm going down. Unfortunately, I could not recover from a problem with the MRAC. Uh, I don't know my location. <laughs> I don't even know who he is. Let go of the freaking mic and I can talk to you. What's the call sign for the emergency? Um, it's, um, Keen Air 2710 Charlie. Rookie Scratch. Let go of the frickin' mic and I can talk to you. 271 Sierra Charlie, roger. Rest in peace. Uh, Good night. There might be some problems to my end. <laughs> he talks a lot for a dead yeah. guy. <laughs> the first problem is you don't let go of your mic. Yes, sir. The first problem is you don't get let go of your mic for about 19 seconds after you talk. Rest in peace. Good night. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hi. Live streamed and recorded for posterity. I'm fantastic. Jet Blue 356, good evening. Climb, maintain flight level 230. Alright, here comes the path. Let's get the power off already. Because she's going to pitch over pretty hard here. Boston Center, Southwest 4465. What was that crossing restriction at Wiper? Again. There's VNAV Pass. Southwest 4465. Leaving 240. Uh, we're looking for what's the cross restriction on a wiper? It's a wiper at 11,000, sir, as uh, published. As published, 11,000. Southwest 4465. Alright, there we go. Starting the descent. Let's monitor that speed carefully and do the descent Southwest check at the same time. Descent check. Fuel. Let's we have tons yeah, of it. We're showing 6,300 pounds overhead the field. We only need 2,300. We've got Delta almost 3,000 an hour and a half of extra. And it doesn't seem like there's too much holding going on, so we're doing good. Uh, approach and landing briefing is complete. Uh, cabin altitude controls are Boston indeed Southwest set for sea level at Boston, and cabin is... Uh, sorry, uh, cabin PA will say is complete. Descent check was complete. Have you fixed your problem yet? Not yet. Can we uh, go ahead and disconnect now for out of the airspace? Affirmative. Good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, Everyone's just bailing on this guy here. <laughs> He's not going to have any airplanes left to control. We'll try to make it to Boston successfully without packing it in anywhere. Contact the boss approach 118.25 long. 118.25, Boston approach on 18 and a quarter. Huh? Let's get that in there and ready to go. Southwest Pacer. Calling, air, uh, calling Boston, call me back in uh, one minute. November 626, November, contact the Boston approach 118.25 long. 1825, 66 November, see it. November 8, Hotel Sierra, contact the Boston approach 118.25 long. 118.25 for 8, Hotel Sierra. Someone else calling Boston? Hey, for Secondary 89, uh, 2106 Southwest. Definitely eight. busy out there. I like it. This is the way the radio should sound all the time. One more time, the call sign. Second Air 89. Alright, I need the, I need it. Written, I need you to tell me the letters because I don't know what a second air is. Zulu, November, Delta, 8, 9er. 
Alright, we're getting down there. We're already on our way into Boston. This is good, we're doing good. Aircraft calling Boston, stand by. Speed for 213, contact the Boston approach 118.25 is long. Hopefully, we'll start to see these airplanes on our TCAS sooner than later. Boston Center, uh, Center can you stress by 63? Uh, are you pounding me over to approach? Well, there's three of you calling at once, I didn't hear any of you. Who wants to get handed to approach? How can you stress by 63? Yeah, I can't hand you off until I take the handoff, sir. I stand by. Okay, express 563, they just picked up the handoff. Contact the Boston Roach, 118.25. Alright, so there's transition, so we're going to go ahead and uh, set 3004. Alright, 3004 inches set and cross checked. And passing 1742. Expect, uh, expect the full v, uh, ILS runway 34 approach. 2 3 approach to the ILS for Southwest 4465. 3 4, 3 4, sir. 3 4, Southwest 4465. Southwest 4465, current weather at uh, Providence, wind 33 to 0, 1 6, gust 2 6, visibility 1 0. Few clouds, 3000. And the altimeter is 3004. Slight change of plans. Expect vectors for a visual approach, runway 34. Visual 34, Southwest 4465. Alright, welcome to Boston. Can't wait to get to the approach frequency. If this guy is busy, let's think how approach is doing. <laughs> Zulu November Delta, I think it was like second air, 89 uh, Boston. Good evening. Uh, Descent to maintain 10,000. The Bedford altimeter, I just had it. Hold on one sec. Getting down there. Well, just send via the arrival, so just follow the published uh, altitude. Yeah, sorry about that. I will just send you via the arrival and expect the runway 2707. No problem. Southwest 4465, turn left heading 0. Let's make a 100 to send a maintain 6000. I've just been tweaking the levels a little bit here. Trying to get rid of that periodic distortion that seems to be coming in there, and I think I figured out the source of it, so I'm hoping that the rest of the ATC is not going to be distorted.
All right. We're coming up to 10,000, so we're going to get that speed back now, below 250. And get ready to do the approach checklist. There we go. Alright, so speed's coming back nicely. Let's get some lights on. Alright, don't get too slow here. Approach checklist. It's 10 to setting 9,000. Uh, altimeters 3004 inches set and cross checked. Nav aids. We'll have to identify when we get to the other side of the airport, but we'll get them from here. Fuel transfer is off. I forgot to do this. Tank ox pumps are on. GPOS lighting flap 15 is selected. Hide quantity checks. Caution of warning lights. Check. Seat belts are on. Lights are on and cabin secure will complete the approach check. Alright, let's get some prop heat on as well in preparation for that cloud deck there. How's our speed here? Speed's okay. And that's Alt Star. Let's just check the ATIS and see if the ATIS has been updated at all since we last checked it. It's information to Oscar now. Just going to look over here. <laughs> My ATIS. Approach on 1825, Encore, 3600, get 8. That's a good way to tune it to a frequency there. All right, Oscar, 320. I'm sorry, make it into, uh, 10 miles, fuel 1100. Oh, it's a lot better than it was. One degree minus three. Three zero zero three. Three zero zero three. Which is left for just 27. Still the same. Boss approach. Good evening, Encore 3600, level 9000 with Oscar. Okay, we do have Oscar and uh, plan uh, ILS 27 now on Quad 3600. We can keep the speed up a little higher than that as we approach here. And And look, we can actually see the lights of Boston out there. That's Bedford down there. I'm pretty sure we're coming right over it on this arrival here. Oh, that's a little bit fast. Alright, let's do, uh, make sure we got the next frequency ready to go here. I think it's 126.5, he said. When you're flying by yourself, especially, be prepared. Have the next frequency ready to go. Nope. Less power. Descend 6,000 on court 3600. Left turn 070 for on court 3600. Okay, no problem. 070 heading on court 3600. Alright, so there's 6,000. 
PS minus a thousand and heading zero seven zero. There it is. Heading zero seven zero, and we're going. And now it doesn't like drawing something there, beeping at me because something's not being drawn properly. Gate Alpha One, and we'll go with Swissport. Now we're starting to see some traffic popping up on the TCAS down here. Should have traffic. Oh, I see him out there. Nice. Very nice. Starting to see traffic. Now it's starting to seem like a real busy airport here. <laughs> now it's going to be the fun part. I'm I'm excited about this. I just it's so nice to see other airplanes out there. And if ever there's a place where you can be confident that uh, people are going to be doing a good job controlling the amount of airplanes that are showing up, it's Boston. Boston never fails to pack them in because they do a good job. These guys are pros from start to finish. Get a lot of Canadian Express planes down here. Lots of traffic around here now. Somebody else coming up. Oh, there's somebody else on that side. Traffic's okay, actually pretty uh, spot at night. Alright, that's uh, 7 descending 6. Now we're getting the scenic tour of the Boston suburbs down here. Lovely. I think that's Manchester up there. I could draw some information on here. Airports. LWM. I think that's Manchester. There's Alt Star. <laughs> My three o'clock, yeah, I saw that guy by three o'clock there. Saw him go by. Look at the number of people on approach now. Ah, there we are. There's where all the people are. Alt. Oh, another streamer. Oh, ha. that's funny. There's just people streaming all over the place here. Hopefully he's got a better frame rate than I do. And somebody's requesting lower on text. Believe me, you'll get lower when he can give it to you. Don't rush him. There is a lot of it. Right turn 150, Encore 3600. Okay, heading east, Encore 3600. Alright, there's heading 090. see the airplanes on final. Looks like there's a little bit of murky cloud hanging out over there. I've lost my bearing a moment. Terrily here, yeah, I know the airport is way down there. Not going to see it yet. Probably not going to see those guys on final, unfortunately. Well, I'll have to check out this live fly guy when I get a chance. Guy sounds stressed too. 
<laughs> he's probably sweating and hasn't touched a drink or anything for hours because he's just working too hard. All right, what we can do is we can probably switch to ILS mode because I don't think we're getting back on that arrival. Don't think we're going to be able to identify it here, but I don't think we're going to need to. I think we're going to be able to pick up the view. Be able to pick up the field visual, so I'm not too worried about identifying the approaches tonight. Looks like we're going to probably get a visual before we get too far away, so. That might have been on the wrong frequency. <laughs> Right turn 130, Encore 3600. Well, if you're going to stream, Friday Night Ops is definitely the time to stream, because there's a lot going on. I'm trying not to talk over the ATC too much, because I'm trying to figure out where some of these guys are, too. And that's part of, uh, that's a huge skill as a pilot, is having that information as well. Having, taking in, wow, there's a lot of airplanes out here taking in information about where other airplanes are and using that to help you get better situational awareness of what you're doing. What flight is uh, Live Fly Guy streaming? What's his flight number? Is he uh, on approach as well, or is he? did he already leave, I wonder? But yeah, having this mental picture of what other people are doing, it can be very useful sometimes for helping to avoid conflicts, helping to predict what a con controller is going to do. United 12 going to Burlington, okay. So he was outbound. He was the one that passed us going outbound. I gotcha. A lot of arrivals still here. Look at this place. Okay, wow. Three, zero, zero, three for I wouldn't wish this many airplanes on the real world controllers. And this is what Boston looks like about f 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon when all the international stuff starts showing up. Oh, this place goes nuts sometimes. I've done it. I've done a 25 mile final for runway 27. I've made the joke more than once that we are not ETOP certified. Descend 5,000, Encore 3,600. Oops. 5,000 feet, set fault cell, VS minus. 5,000. Boston on 1265, Encore 3,600. Nice job, good night. And we got that 26.5 ready to go there. Flip it over. Approach, good evening, Encore 3600 with you heading 130, 5400, descending 5000. Left zero nine zero Encore thirty six hundred. Southwest twenty two thirty two Boston Tower one two eight one eight. Back to the east. There's Alt Star. There's heading zero nine or zero. I'm sure by now the cabin is secure. <laughs> Can I get to right heading three six zero? All right. Uh, Our DME readout here for twenty five miles final and counting. <laughs> This is going to be a long final this evening. Gotta bring the fuel when you come to Friday Night Ops. I've been there. Just skirting through the layer here. We can probably identify this ILS at this point while we're waiting for this guy here. Speed 210, Encore 3600. Alright, speed 210, he says. I totally missed that readout there, but it'll come back again in a second. Alright, so that's number one identified. 
All right, that's number two identified as well. All right, so the nav aids are successfully identified in case we don't break out. Looks like we got a pretty good power setting here for 210. Not too bad. Lost a bit more speed than intended there somehow. I keep hearing it beeping very lightly in the background now, so I gotta cut those out. There we go. There's two ten. Not as easy as when you got an auto thrust system here. You actually have to work to keep these. <laughs> Winds are a little bit gusty, huh? Yeah. Maybe we'll do a Norman P landing. Wow, this might be a new personal record here. We lost the DME, we're so far out. <laughs> The nice thing about Boston is there's just nothing but empty ocean out over here, so you can make this approach to 27 as long as you want. Oh, ice detected, really? Alright, speed check. Right turn 180 on Core 3600. Ice protection's all on. Heading one eight zero, and let's make sure. Let's uh, sequence the waypoints there. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Oops, gonna do the same thing on this side. Really? I don't think we need to descend. He's passing behind us. Oh, I never cross filled this one, that's why. I should have. I know. There we go, now we'll have Clane on there. There we go. I was not going to do a TCAS RA to this guy. He did not need that. Right turn 270, Encore 3600. There's heading 270, still trying to keep the speed as close to 210 as possible. Let's 
send 4,000 on core 3,600. 4,000 feet set, alt cell, BS, minus 1,000, 5 descending 4, I'm letting this controller be the star of my YouTube channel for now. Or my Twitch channel, I should say. Mm, breaking in and out here. Alt star. Like we're not getting any more ice filled up, so I'm going to go ahead and kill the increased ref. Trying to keep 210 knots here, but it's tough. I don't see anything building up on the wings there, so ice is good. Alt green. So how far are we from Boston here? Almost 40 miles away from the airport. <laughs> wow. This would be when you'd have a ground delay program. No more airplanes. Wow. And this is why we bring the extra fuel here. Not that it's an issue at all yet, but boy. Twenty-eight for tower. Right turn 300, join the like laser and speed 170, Encore 3, 3600. American 646, what's your speed? 300. 170 for the past one out. Loke. <laughs> okay. And speed back to 170. <laughs> All right, let's go. High pumps on. Flat five. And the FA notification. Air speed one seventy. The T gas in this airplane is ridiculously sensitive. I think a little more sensitive than in the real world. Alright, we're in loke. Trying to keep speed to 170. Trying to make small adjustments so we don't overdo it. And I see the ice detected again. Let me just sync the heading bug here. Heading 273 to match the inbound course, and again, ice protection, all on.
This guy keeps tricking it off, even though he's just five miles away. Okay, cleared the ILS uh, 27 and 170 to rip it, uh, Encore 3600. Now we're cleared for the approach, so there's the glide slope armed. Now we're actually on the localizer. Hey, look, we got the DME back. We're only 26 miles final now. <laughs> wow. Oh, stop doing that. Trying my best to find a power setting that works there that keeps it at 170, but that's going too far above and below. It's really entertaining being up here and watching all these airplanes. There we are. I think we got a pretty good power set in there. Maybe just to even just just a smidge and less. Just to get just a little bit less speed. Just to knock about three knots off the speed would be great. I want to maintain this 170 as precisely as possible given the number of airplanes in front and behind here. Alright, how far have we got to claim? Uh, we got about five, six miles till we get to claim, and then I'll finally be on my, my approach chart. Oh, I think I see him out there. I see somebody out there. We're getting there. <laughs> wow. Friday Night Ops, this is what you expect. A long, long final. Nope, we lost a little bit too much speed there at some point. I don't know if the wind shifted or what the deal was there. We were doing 170 pretty well. Alright, let's see if we can get that back now. It's definitely a little smoother now that we're out of those clouds, finally. It's definitely smoother now. Now we can hopefully maintain that 170 a little bit more precisely if I can ever get it back now. Here comes the next person on the downwind. Well, not the next person, anyways. There we go. Now we got 170 back. Take just a smidgen off the power. And the glide slips alive. Hooray! Tower 128 decimal 8, have a great night, Encore 3600. Thank you. 
Tower, good evening, Encore 3600 with you on a 15-mile uh, ILS friendly A27. Alright, looks like the ice protection is good to turn off. Clear to land 27 check marks, Encore 3600. And there's Glide Slope. That's why we're gaining speed. Glide Slope. Go around altitude of 3,000 feet is set. That's why we started gaining speed. Didn't realize we'd intercept the Glide Slope. Too busy doing everything else here, trying to check in and change frequencies. All right, we got 21.9 ready for ground. Back to 170 on the speed. Oh, enough with your traffic, traffic. Sir, Toga 1, Charlie Bravo, turn left heading 220, runway 33 left, clear for takeoff. Left 220, 33 left, clear for takeoff, on Charlie Bravo. Really? Ice detected? Again? We're in the clear! Oh my god, I'm getting really tired of this thing too here. Every time I think of... We're in the clear. I'm beginning to get very suspicious of my, uh... Ice detector. Alright, doing a pretty good job with that speed control there. It's not perfect, but pretty damn good for this dash and for what are actually some pretty small uh, thrust levers, power levers. That's uh, disregard, Mr. Approach Altitude is set. Now we're going to start gaining on this guy, but we got to keep the 170 to rip it. Another th Three miles, we'll start slowing down even more. Alright, everything is looking good here. Oh, yeah. No way I'm going to do that return leg. I am getting tired just sitting here watching this approach happen. Fall asleep just going out to a 30, 40 mile final for runway 27 here in Boston. <laughs> Might be a new record for me. But we're getting back there, slowly but surely. Alright, I'm going to take your down. Here comes a rip it. I'll take flap 15. Keep with the gusty winds, we're going to do condition levers max. And the landing checklist. Now, the ice is still detected there. So, what do we got for VREF 125 plus 145? Alright, uh, let's do the landing check, anyways, while we're waiting here. Uh, Landing checklist. So standby head for speed to controller on. Landing gears down. Three green. Flap is 15 set and indicating and condition levers are max. Ice protection is all on right now. Stop with the traffic. Traffic. Uh, bleed air one and two. Smith and on and the F notification is PA lit. Checklist. Uh, is complete. And, uh, visual. We're up to 145. Don't think that ice protection's coming off. Nope, not coming off, I guess. Gonna pop the 
this up now so I can see the speed a little more clearly. I'm going to say stable. We are cleared to land. Disregard, we're below the minimum altitude for traffic alerts. Disengage in the autopilot. Getting a little low here, come on. Still nailed it nicely there. Just gotta get that center line back. Especially with the slideshow that is now the Boston Airport here. Yeah, we didn't make Echo in the dash. So be it. We're gonna make Kilo. Right turn on Kilo and ground 21 air on core 3600, have a good day. Don't stop completely, you silly plane. Just take a second to quickly... Alright. Just gonna turn off at least a few of these lights here. Ground, good evening, Encore 3600, just clear 27 on Kilo, going to Kate Alpha 1. Encore 3600. Encore 3600. One last question for you. Where are you going? Uh, gate Alpha 1, please. Said it the first time. Kilo and across 4 left to the gate. Uh, Encore 3600. Thank you. Easy peasy. Uh, Tank ox bumps off. Yeah, autopilot should be disengaged. Yaw dampers off. Alright, I think we got everything on the checklist except for turning these suckers off. And this thing on. There we go. Cleared across runway 4 left, and there it is, and just kilo to the gate. Normally we'd go in echo to get in this ramp, but anyways. I'm happy to take whatever way they want to get me in there at this point. Looks like somebody's blocking Echo anyway, so that just makes more sense to go this way anyways. Alright, let's do a quick after landing checklist. Nope, don't stop completely. After landing checklist. Radar's off. Transponder staying on alt. Flaps. Zero. Control locks on. Tank ox pumps on. Sorry, tank ox pumps are off. Yeah, dampers. I thought I had it off. Yaw dampers off. Flight ta I must have clicked the autopilot by mistake. That's probably what I did. Flight taxi is taxi. Anti collision is red. All of the lights are as required. Ice protection is all off. Main bus ties tied and the APU staying off for this arrival. The uh, after landing flow is complete. Our flight checklist is complete. <laughs> oh. The joy of Friday Night Ops sometimes. Alright. Not terrible frame rate. It's not to the single digits at least. It's not great. But it's not How terrible frame rate. Okay. 
remember. Remember to learn in Toronto. Use the rudder for the straightaways. Because it's a lot more subtle. Wow, there's a lot of airplanes parked over here on this apron. Now it's killing it. Busy little apron here. Looks like people are operating this ramp backwards, but that's okay. We'll just work with it. We'll just go with it as well. Not even all that many airplanes in my field of view, but it's enough apparently to stutter my performance here. I think I see a maple flight down there. <laughs> I see you, maple. I see you down there, Gate Bravo 3, or maybe Bravo 2. I think you're Bravo 3 there by the looks of it. Alright, we're almost there. I can't believe we finally made it. That was a long final. Well, but. Like I said, it's to be expected. Friday Night Ops. In Boston, no less. This is exactly what you expect. Now, it looks like somebody might be parked at my gate. Because I think he's at Alpha 1. That's Alpha 4, Alpha 3, Alpha 2, Alpha 1. He's parked at Alpha 1, so ergo, I'm going to have to change my parking facility here. Nobody told me that my gate was taken. Yeah, they got way too many other things to worry about over whether or not my gate's taken, so we're going to switch to Alpha 3. No, we don't need to follow me, just move everybody there. Continue with Swissport. Give it a second, and there's my Marshaller. Alright, so Marshaller's in sight, let's go taxi light off. Not too often you actually show up at an airport and the gate you want is actually occupied. Another one of the joys of Friday Night Ops. Alright, try to get this in there during the slideshow here. Frame rate's not terrible, but it's not great. I forgot to do is I forgot to turn on the dome light. There we go. As soon as you turn off the taxi light when the marshal is in sight, if it's nighttime, turn on the dome light as well so they can see you. So they can see any hand signals that you have to give them, such as when the parking brake's set or when you want them to connect external power. You can give them a thumbs up. You want to make sure that they can see you as well as they. Or, yeah, make sure they can see you as well as you can see them. Tiny bit. Oh, come on, just a tiny bit. I love the dash eight though, because you can creep so slowly. There we go. All right, and shut down checklist. So first of all, we've got to turn off the bleeds and the hydraulics, and then I can go. Start feather. And what I'm going to do really quick, just to show you here, is we go data services, we request the GPU, and then once the GPU request is done, then I'm going to start my timer here. So then the captain has to turn off the, seat, the snow steering and seatbelt sign, and then call for the shutdown checklist. So shutdown checklist says taxi light is off, transponder is. Standing by. Emergency brake is set. Uh, power levers are disc. Condition levers are start feather. No steering is off. Seatbelts are. He's a problem child. Seatbelts are off. Bleed uh, air one and two is been and off. And external power APU should be on within 30 seconds of setting the parking brake. And the FO should have done this for me. 
and that's on. And condition leaver's 30 seconds. Even now, with doing all that, there's 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 almost a minute. Fuel off. Lights as oops. I mean to turn off the position lights. Lights as required. Standby ox and main batteries are off. And battery master's off. And emergency brake staying on, and that's it. We're done. Oh my gosh. Woo! All right, let's get that. Uh, let's see if we can get that jetway to move over here, please. Yes. Come to the front, please. There you go. Here he comes. And then we can request deboarding, and we are done. Just waiting for the jetway to operate. Run through the tire. <laughs> Run over my tor poor tug driver there. Wow. Ah. Uh, Whoa, that was uh, that was a lot, but we are here. Look, there's another Delta flight that pulled up. It either spawned or they pulled up while we were there. Hooray, though, we made it, guys. And right, I'm gonna press this end flight button with a lot of satisfaction. There, it's thinking about it. There we go. One last flight remain remains in my flight schedule. It is now almost midnight local time. We are not doing this flight back because by the time you get all said and done, it's at least a two-hour flight back to Toronto. Not gonna happen now, but. Save that for another day, maybe later this weekend. We'll see what happens. Either way, uh, I'm pretty happy about it. That touchdown was a little bit firm, 113 feet per minute, but still not bad. When it turns into a bit of a slideshow, it makes it a little bit hard to judge what you're doing sometimes. But there we go. So that's done. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, busy, and that's the way we like it. That's the whole point of Friday Night Ops, is, hey, let's show up and let's make this busy. Let's see what we can do here. So let's see, I should probably open that cargo door for this guy down there. There we go. Maybe do a uh, custom view from the baggage loader there. There we go. All right, buddy. Do that, and away you go. And he's going to get ready to offload. So, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I, I appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I do love Friday Night Ops. I don't get to participate very much. But uh, it's nice to do it once in a while. And it's nice to be able to sh share it with you guys. Really, the stars of my channel for the last hour or so were all the Boston controllers. So thank you, Boston controllers, uh, for a great job. You did a really good job tonight. Uh, <laughs> notwithstanding the 40-mile final, that's not your fault. Just handling the traffic you got. So, uh you know, uh, it is what it is. Next time we'll just simulate the normal GDP program that happens in Boston every single time the weather gets this bad or it gets this busy. But anyways, like I said, that was tons of fun. I hope you guys will stick with the channel. Watch the uh, Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the Twitch channel. And we'll see you guys all very soon.